Welcome friends, followers and haters of this channel. Today we got something special for which I'll actually put on my working shirt. Ta because today's vlog is about something special and that's called Ionic Studio. So I have the honor to review Ionic Studio. I got access to it for about one week. I forced myself not to use it before this vlog. I have no idea what you can expect in this vlog. I've installed it, I have not opened it. So we will dive into my very first impression of Ionic Studio, which is the Ionic IDE, yeah. or sort of IDE. I think we will talk about the term as well later and see what we can do with it, how far it is in terms of maturity, and then of course how you can get it and why you might need it. I'm actually excited as well, super excited, because I really was looking forward to this all the last week. So let's do this. Also, I kind of feel like this vlog is definitely going longer than the usual time. I'm already sorry up front, just wanted to let you know. I hope you can still give me the like, subscribe and everything in your power to support this channel. So now we go. Let's hit the magic button and there we go. My very first impression of Ionic Studio looking cool with dark mode. Um, good old Matt saying a little hello. Actually, I'm not sure. Let's start a new project. Sounds like that's what we should do. Simon's project bundle ID um, com dev tick whatever path. Okay, um, let's just do it. And then we can select, but I want to go with a blank project. So here we go. Um, seems like the CLI is automatically open in the window. The NPM install is running and pretty fast uh, Ionic Surf, if that's... No, that's not the Surf. This looks like the template area from which we can select the different areas that are also marked on the left pane. And on the right, I can... Wow, this is already cool. <laughs> Not working. Um, trying, just trying around some things. Okay, so we can select the view components on the middle screen. We can on the right see all the CSS variables of that element. We can toggle on padding, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, we can do crazy things with a diff element and on here we could I guess um, change all the things which is actually even more than live reload because this is not the live preview it's actually like the live view or whatever I would call it so here we could choose between different sizes of the phones where we want to have a preview from um, cool that we also got the desktop area, not the biggest screen, but uh, anyway, we could now test also for the desktop and of course for Android as well with the Google Pixel. Um, of course, we can rotate the device. So then let's see what we can do as well. We can switch to styles, which in my eyes should of course be the SCSS file, scripts, um, yeah, which is the according TypeScript file of that page and the module. Pretty cool, you get like the four elements just here right here up the top, uh, which represent the four files. You also get the HTML, the TypeScript file, the module file and the styling. Um, interesting, interesting. Uh, okay, so let's see what we get on the left side as well. We got somehow the navigation, then we got like the real project view um, in which of course we also see the code. So let's see if we want to change something in here. Uh, let's add an ion card. Okay, I thought I might have something like a code completion or automatic elements in here, um, but that doesn't seem to be either not yet finished or it's just not included. I don't know. Or when I have right card, no. So that would be kind of cool. I don't know if these are terminal windows or just, I just, I would like to get Ionic Surf. I guess this play button run, yeah, looks like Ionic Surf. Looks like, or I guess this will 
kind of open some sort of browser, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so here's studio support. Uh, I don't need support, I'm a pro. Um, add page, add service. These are like the commands you normally run. So let's try just a simple example. Oh no, I got lost the window. Come back. Hello window, please. Where are you? Um, there we go. I'm actually not sure this is looks like Chrome or something, but it's a preview and Ionic Surf. So what are these? Rotate. This is okay. Open the dev tool. So this seems to be an instance of Chrome running. Uh, let's change something to dev uh, vlog example. Um, but I can't switch between the windows. So this is right now really tricky. Um, I don't know. Once it's gone, I can't really uh, open it. Or can I? Uh, let me let me just make this a bit smaller. So okay, I got already two. But let's see, vlog, save, and then yeah, we got of course automatic reload in there. Um, looks like it's not using Chrome, so um, using some sort of own implementation. And to get the dev tools, I would have to open this, and then on the console, I would see the usual stuff and also the debugging should pretty much work the same i guess yeah that's still the chrome browser tools all right um let's look at generating a new page so new name at your bottom uh, of course that's the details page so it's running the command i'm actually not sure how i can open my own command line in here because I normally already know the commands so I would expect like in Visual Studio Code just to have my own command line in here but these are just showing the tasks and route guard no um, not exactly sure because I also don't want to have my page here I would like to have it at a different place but that's just a detail so um, let's see what we got in here as well we got Assets? Oh, cool. That's actually showing all the files of the asset folder of the project, which is right uh, here. Then we got a theme. Oh, cool. We immediately got the uh, theme switcher or the tool that they got on the page in the internet on here as well. So we can in here change our theme and see the preview. That is a very cool idea, very smart. And I guess. Uh, once I save it in here, uh, the values would also show up in the theme file right here. Yeah, that's a dark green. So we got the theme builder in here included. That's cool. And then we got the setting. Uh, okay, that's like the uh, representation of the config XML, I would say. So author, website, project, bundle ID. But uh, I'm not sure because I specified my bundle ID, but it's taking the starter bundle ID. That's a little issue. Platforms, no platforms install. Let's add the iOS platform right from here with a click. That's pretty, pretty handy, I would say. Um, again, I mostly know all the CLI commands, but of course, it's kind of nice to just click on it, I would say. We also got some plugins. These are no installed plugins and here we got a list of i would say these are all the ionic native plugins they got so uh let's just can i search is there a search bar here yeah here uh let's use the geo location um like this one edit variables uh i am fba Okay, that's cool actually dialogue because sometimes you forget to add those values and then you don't know why you don't have any permissions. Um, but right now I'm not completely sure where all of this stuff is happening. So I click to add the iOS platform. Um, okay, there we go. Um, I somehow switched the view by clicking on this circle to um, a lot of interesting things but um i think these are maybe the background tasks or so but here's the ionic color platform add 
the uh, installation for the Ionic geolocation and also that's cool. You, you click add plugin and it immediately installs the Ionic native package and the Cordova plugin. So um, that's really cool. Also, it shows that you can update some of your plugins like here. Um, let's let's not do this right now. And you can also uh, manage your app icon in here, select another image for the splash screen. In terms of this editor, I'm not completely sure what I can do right now. So um, that's like the preview, but ah, okay. Yeah, now we get to the cool stuff. Here we got like the visual editor and can this please somehow and let's use a nav push. I don't know, right here. No, here, please. And now let's do a bit of uh, project manager styling in here. So what we want to do is, I don't know what this means. Can I write or uh, details? I just want to go to the details page with the button, but I have no idea how to achieve it. Of course not, because I didn't read anything. Of course, I can change all the things in here. That's fine. Strong, interesting, disabled, uh, button type, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, router direction is forward. I think I said this already, shape is fine. Um, I would really like to say that I wanna go to, I don't know how this works. Is there some kind of information on this? Um, not really. But I wanna go to the details page, but I really don't know what this means. I can click it, but I don't get no response. Okay, from there, I can immediately go in here and router direction forward. I don't know, I'll just pass in router, router link, and that should be to the details page. I think that was added. So let me save this, and somewhere I should have my reload still open. That kinda works, and I'm now interested how this looks in the view. How do I go back easily? I don't know. So I really don't know how the action works. Add new method name. Okay, then a new pop-up do stuff comes up. So then I got an event assigned to it. And I guess I can go back into the scripts and I will, no, I don't see. I thought this would automatically implement like a do stuff function in uh, the page TypeScript file, but apparently it doesn't. I think for first um, impression, that should be enough. I think we already anyways. Yeah, it's way too long. I have to cut. All right, that was a very confusing first look. I'm sorry if you couldn't follow, but my intention was to give you like the very first impression I have with this tool and my honest opinion about a few things that I would expect to be in place and some that are cool because if I take a look at this for one week and then present you how awesome it is, then of course it will be awesome. But I just really wanted to get the reality to you. I know this is still a very early version, so I would rate it, I think, three Ionids out of five. Um, I take two for, there are a few tool tips missing, I would say, so that would kind of help me to see on some elements uh, what this actually does or uh, what I can input in a few fields. And also in general, a little introduction uh, might have been useful for me, just a really quick one. Besides that, I really enjoyed working with this not complete IDE. This is just a tool for Ionic developers to um, build Ionic apps faster. So, you don't have to use this, you don't have to pay for it. Uh, you can still build awesome Ionic apps with the tools we always used before, but it can make your life a lot easier. You saw that we can install the plugins, the Cordova stuff, the Ionic native ones. Um, we can add the theme stuff right inside there with the different colors. Uh, we can say change the project settings. So we don't have to work on the lowest level, but we can take one step up. I, at this point, I actually don't know what about Capacitor, um, but I'm sure they already work on Capacitor integration as well. So let me know your opinion about Ionic Studio and what you've seen so far. Would you like to see more of it? Then I can create like a demo project and we dive into it and uh, explore all the useful features of it that I haven't highlighted yet just because it was just a first look and honest review. 
So if you found this confusing, please also take a look at my other videos, which are to some degree not that confusing. And of course, like the video and subscribe to the channel for more great Ionic videos and also developer vlogs. I would love to have you as a plus one on the list and I would love to see you in the next video. This week go out try Ionic Studio if you can and otherwise simply write an awesome Ionic app with the tools you have and enjoy it. I'll catch you next week. As always, happy coding, Simon.